small Iowa town of 100 people before moving to Canada and then Southern California. He got involved in storytelling just a couple of years ago and was named a finalist in the Search for Long Beach's Greatest Storyteller. He's performed at various venues in the Long Beach area and is now working on his one-person show. So everybody, let's welcome Doyle Mine. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. Faggot, <laughs> queer, gay, homo. Oh, I remember that one. Somebody called me that back in the seventh grade in my small Midwestern high, junior high school. Didn't really know much about gayness back in those days. It wasn't talked about and it wasn't in the news. So when that guy called me a homo, it sent me running to my trusty Webster's Dictionary. No, it wasn't on my phone or my tablet. Those things didn't exist. No, the Webster's was a dusty, hard-covered book in the library. I took the book from the shelf and I went over into a corner so no one would see which word I was looking up. And I still remember the definition I read that day. Homo. Homosexual. Of or relating to one's own sex. What? I wasn't relating to my own sex. Well, maybe kind of, sort of, but hey, I mean, that's a phase. All guys go through that phase, don't they? And so for the next 40 some years, I went through my phase. <laughs> And even while I got married and had two children, I kept <coughs> hoping the feelings would go away. <coughs> nevertheless, I stayed married for 27 years. Feelings never left, and every time I told the lie that I wasn't gay, I cut deep wounds into my sense of self and self-worth. But that phony life would come to an end one August afternoon when my wife sat me down in the living room of our home and she asked me the question that I had been running from my entire life. She said, are you gay? In that moment, a thousand thoughts went through my head. I thought, I am sick of you. I am sick of this relationship. And mostly, I'm sick of me and telling the lie. So I said, yes. I'm gay. Well, my life as I knew it ceased to exist. What followed was a series of difficult conversations. There was a meeting with my son and his wife and my daughter and her husband where I had to admit to them that I was gay. At first I thought it was difficult because I was admitting that I was gay, but later I realized that it was difficult because I was admitting the dad was a liar. My lie about my orientation was my love for them, also a lie. Where did my lying stop and start? Conversations with my siblings and friends were equally as difficult as I admitted to person after person the lie. By the end of it, I was exhausted and worn out. My friend Jay had a cabin on the ocean. I asked him if I could go there for a week. He graciously agreed. I would leave on Sunday afternoon. My friends Rob and Brenda would come on the following weekend to spend it with me. I'm not sure in hindsight that it was the best decision, but at the time it seemed like the right thing to do. Those days at the cabin were dark days, filled with lots of self-abusing and hate. By the time that Wednesday night came around, I saw no hope in my life as a gay man. I felt alone and hopeless. And then a thought came to me. And it's just a passing thought at first, but it quickly gained momentum. What if I ended it all right here, right now? All this pain, all this suffering would be gone and Robin and Brenda would come on Friday and they would... They'd find my body. So I began to plan my departure from this place of pain to places unknown. A 
On Thursday night, I walked out onto the deck with a fistful of pills. I sat and I looked out at the ocean for a long time. I don't know how long I sat there. At some point, I stood up. But I couldn't bring my hand to my mouth. It was like my arm was blocked. And then I, I felt a lightness coming over me. I felt my hand open, and the pills fell from it and bounced and danced on the deck before falling between the cracks. I was ready. I was going to die that night. The old Doyle was going to die. Enough of the lying. Enough of the self-hating, self-abusing thoughts. Enough of the old Doyle. So I killed him. And I decided to let the new Doyle have a chance at life, to let the Doyle be the authentic self that he really is. You see, I believe I have inside of me everything I need to live a bountiful life. With all the love alive in me, I'll stand as a tall as the tallest tree. And I'm grateful for each day that I'm given, both the easy ones and the hard ones I'm living. But most of all, I'm thankful for loving who I really am. I'm beautiful. Yeah, I'm beautiful.